The tales of the First World War have been retold several times, but one account of bravery has often been overlooked. How a band of Indian soldiers won a battle in a land far away from home, overcoming modern weapons armed with lances, it is beyond imagination. This is the incredible story of the Third Battle of Gaza and the Battle of Haifa. How Indian soldiers proved their mettle in the Middle East. One of the greatest achievements, perhaps in India's pre-independence military history, is the role played during World War I by the Indian troops in the liberation of Israel's Haifa from the rule of the Ottomans, 1918. When the World War I broke out in 1914, India was still in the clutches of the British Empire. As a colony, some Indian states supplied troops to the British cause. Three such regiments, Hyderabad Lancers, Mysore Lancers and Jodhpur Lancers were deployed in the Middle East fighting the Ottoman Empire. Ten months before Haifa, the Lancers and Gurkha riflemen had played a key role in another battle, fought south of Haifa. The Third Battle of Gaza in November 1917 became the turning point in the Palestine Campaign. The Indians fought alongside the Empire forces against the Ottomans. The Imperial Service Cavalry Brigade cut through Gaza and advanced up to the northeast end of the Gaza Strip. Intense maneuvers and engagements later, the Ottoman forces were forced to retreat. Incidentally, about 900 Indian soldiers killed in different sectors of the Middle Eastern theater were interred in cemeteries across Israel in Jerusalem, Ramla, and Haifa. But why are we talking about this now? Indians call the Gaza Strip the Gaza Patti. It is a sliver of land between Israel and Egypt, which is home to more than 20 Lakh Palestinians. The Gaza Strip and West Bank constitute the state of Palestine, and India became one of the first countries to grant it recognition in 1988. Eight years later, India opened a representative office in Gaza, which was shifted in 2003 to Ramallah, a city in the West Bank and the de facto capital of the state of Palestine. In February 2018, a month after he hosted Netanyahu in New Delhi, PM Modi became the first Indian Prime Minister to visit Palestine, where he was received by President Mahmoud Abbas. Occupied by the British in 1918 after the defeat of the Ottomans in the Great War, Gaza passed into Egyptian hands following the 1948 Arab-Israeli War at the end of the British Mandate for Palestine. In June 1967, threatened by a coalition of Arab states, Israel launched preemptive airstrikes against Egyptian airfields and military facilities. Its ground troops overran the Gaza Strip and Sinai Peninsula, seizing it from the Egyptians. It also took the West Bank, including East Jerusalem, from the Jordanians and the Golan Heights from the Syrians. The Six-Day War ended in a decisive Israeli victory. The Oslo Accords of 1993 and 1995 led to the creation of the Palestinian National Authority with the Fatah-controlled administration controlling parts of the West Bank and, until 2006, the Gaza Strip. That year, Hamas, the militant Palestinian organization founded in 1987 with the aim of armed resistance to Israeli occupation, won the elections. A year later, they ousted Fatah, which was co-founded by Yasser Arafat in 1959 and which is now led by President Mahmoud Abbas from Gaza and took full control of the Strip. Two years before Hamas seized control, the government of Ariel Sharon unilaterally dismantled 21 Israeli settlements in the Gaza Strip and four in the West Bank, an action that generated a heated debate in and out of Israel. In August 2005, Netanyahu, who was Sharon's main political challenger, resigned from the government as it gathered 
to approve the first phase of the pullout, saying he could not be part of any unilateral plan that offered nothing in return. Under the disengagement plan, Israeli settlements were dismantled, some 9,000 settlers were evicted, and the troops pulled out. Palestinians were told that under the Oslo agreements, Israel would continue to control the airspace over Gaza and the territorial waters. Today, the Middle East is boiling. You've read and heard a lot about the ongoing war between Israel and Hamas. A massive surprise attack on Israel by Hamas, the group that controls Gaza, has quickly escalated into the most intense conflict in decades. Right now, Israel is battling Hamas in the south and is staring at another full-fledged war in the north with Lebanon. Israel has declared its northern border with Lebanon, a closed military zone after deadly clashes with Hezbollah. Hezbollah has said that they are fully prepared to join the Hamas group in their war against Israel. This comes at a time when Iran has also warned that Israel could receive a response from Tehran's allies, thereby raising fears of a full-blown regional warfare amid the ongoing violent attacks between Israel and Hamas fighters. Most recently, a massive blast rocked a Gaza City hospital on the 17th of October. It was packed with wounded and other Palestinians seeking shelter. The attack killed hundreds. The Hamas attacks inside Israel, the killings and the rocket barrage still ongoing, have turned the spotlight on Netanyahu and his government. What remains to be seen is how far will Israel go in this war? The Hamas, on the other hand, would like to widen the conflict, hoping to fire anti-Israel sentiments across the region and derail the Abraham Accords.